So does breaking in a new rifle barrel matter? Does it make a difference? Well, let's break in one and find out. I think this thing's bore sighted in. Okay, the topic of breaking in a new rifle barrel. I did a lot of research on that very recently. And I was curious as to what all the different thoughts are out there on it. And as you might expect, the thoughts on breaking in a new board were just all over the place. And from a lot of very experienced, knowledgeable shooters. Okay, so some were saying it's not necessary, I don't do it. Some saying, yeah, this is my very long process for doing it. Just again, it's all over the place. Well, someone recently left a quote that I think explains a lot of the mystery of this. And the quote was, traditions are solutions for problems which we have since forgotten. I, I think that's pretty telling. Okay, with the dogmatic approach of breaking in a bore, shoot clean, shoot two shots clean, shoot three shots clean, four shots clean, five shots clean, I think that's more than necessary for most rifles, but it works. Versus I think most of the experienced shooters that say they don't follow a dogmatic, that dogmatic approach in particular, almost all of them I listened to, they did clean their rifles after they fired a few shots on a new bore. And so they were breaking in the barrels, just the difference between them and most of us is they knew when it was broke in. All right, they knew what was going on with that board just from the experience they have, and they didn't have to go through all that. Whereas most of us that don't know exactly what's going on or when one is or isn't broken in, if we go through the entire process, we can be pretty sure it worked. Okay, and that's the process I generally follow, and I generally use JB Bore Cleaner. And I've been doing this for I don't know, at least 25 years, I guess. And I started doing it after I read an article by, it was, I believe, in Outdoor Life, one of the shooting magazines, and it was an interview with Kenny Jarrett of Jarrett Rifles, and he described the process, which that's not what he was doing with his rifles, and you didn't need to do it with his rifles. If you bought a Jarrett rifle, you were essentially getting a match-grade custom barrel that's hand lapped. It wasn't necessary. Right. The process he described was just for your average factory rifle, just normal shooters like most of us. We could follow that process and be pretty sure we had our barrel was pretty well broken in when we were done. Okay, and the theory behind all of it, maybe I need to throw that out there. Okay, there's machine marks in the barrel, there's tool marks, there's burrs, there's all kinds of things going on from the manufacturing process. Okay, when we fire a bullet, and that bullet first enters the lands of the rifling, burrs and things like that can cause scarring in the side of the bullet. Grooves, deeper than normal. They all have microscopic grooves, but deeper than normal grooves. Those grooves in the side of a bullet allow all the, not all, but some of the gas, the high pressure gas that's propelling the bullet from the cartridge going off. When those gases go around the bullet and escape, they're actually vaporizing part of the bullet when they go by because they're superheated. So the copper on the jacket itself becomes vaporized. It's literally in the air. As it goes further down the bore, it cools off. It deposits copper inside the barrel. Copper fouling, which doesn't help our accuracy if it builds up too much. Okay, and plus then there's the rough areas that where the land start from tool marks and burrs and so forth that cause those irregularities in the bullet. Well, that can leave some fouling there also. Breaking in the bore just removes the copper fouling. All right, if we fire a shot over rough areas, over a washboard in here, and it fills up with copper, well, our next shot's just putting more copper down on top of that, and the bullet's not actually touching steel now, it's touching copper. 
Whereas if we clean it after each shot, then the bullet's actually making contact with steel on the next shot, so it's actually burnishing it, helping to knock down burrs, toe marks, that th type thing. And with myself, use, normally using JB Bore Cleaner, that's a, a very mild abrasive, so it's actually doing a light polishing in there. And that's what Kenny Jarrett recommended, was JB Bore Cleaner way back when, when I read that article. And I've been doing it ever since. Okay, is that necessary? On all rifles, I'm sure it's not. And I said earlier about custom hand-lapped barrels. Well, it's, I don't think it's necessary on a you know, top-end target barrel. I don't think it hurts it if you do it correctly. But so that's. I think that's what's where a lot of the confusion comes in. A lot of the more experienced people on the subject that don't believe in breaking in a barrel, they they know what they're seeing in a bore to start with. They've got the experience to know what's going on, so that for them it is not necessary. And then for the rest of us, I think it makes a difference. Alright, so let's get the our first bullet down range on this one. And I debated before whether to load up some precision ammo for this one or shoot the factory stuff. I'm going to shoot the factory stuff. For those of you that didn't see the, the first part of this series, I'm already mad at this rifle. This, the rifling looks rough. It might shoot, it might not. I, I think the odds of it shooting are... Hold on, let me find a coin. That's where we're at, 50-50. It might, it might not. Okay, so we're going to shoot it, and as far as loading precision ammo for it, with the, as uneven as these lands are, I like to load my bullets 20 thousandths off the lands. How do you load 20 thousandths off the lands off this? Which land? The one that's a eighth or a quarter of an inch further in than the rest of them? So yeah, we're just going to shoot some factory stuff, see what this does, and go from there. And if you noticed, I haven't pulled the sticker off this barrel yet. At this point, this rifle isn't worth pulling the sticker off. That's about how I feel about this one right now. So it's, it butter impressed me. All right, so let's get a, a shot down here. And then we're, I've already shown this bore when we cleaned up, when we set up the rifle. Now, after the first shot, we're going to take a look at it again, clean it, and so on, and see what we got after each shot. And maybe I did a decent job on bore sighting this and we hit paper. I did hit paper. That's a good sign. Now let's see what this bore looks like. Well, the rifle shot great. It, it did feel good, which I expected it would. 6.5 creep bore and a fairly heavy rifle. It's been a single shot, all the weights in the barrel, which I mean, just makes it for a really smooth shooting rifle. And I was happy with that scope also, that Vortex. I still prefer loopholes, just the eye relief and stuff you get with the loophole in the sight picture. There's not a lot of black around your lens when you're looking through a loophole. Whereas this and there's a lot more, but this one was a lot better than a lot of the Vortex scopes I've looked through. Now let's see what we got here on this bore. So we're in the throat. There's our lands. And right now I don't even see that big ugly one that sticks up almost to the end. That's a good sign. It really must have been just barely showing up and it's just covered up with carbon now, I guess. So let's see what else we got. What's the car copper looking like? Yeah, we got a little copper now, a little fouling. A little darker from the carbon. The 
see what that burr on the end looks like where they did the, the crown. It appears to still be there. It's, it's a, tough to see it with that bright background, but right there in the grooves. Hopefully that clears up by the time we're done. Right, so that's the fouling we've got from one shot. Not a lot, not bad. Hopefully, if the whole theory behind all this is correct, as we start shooting, we'll get less and less fouling. With the cleaning after each shot, we should get less and less fouling after each shot. And maybe it does add naturally, I don't know. But it will be interesting to see if the burr cleans up on the end from that crown where that machine did. Maybe just shooting it enough, that alone would eliminate the burr. Just the bullet going by. I don't know. But it's definitely not going to hurt to run some hoppies through here and clean everything up on a bronze brush with a patch around. I'm going to use a square patch to wrap around my brush and these patches are I don't see the size I think they're two and a quarter by two and a quarter I'm cutting them down a little bit just because I know they're going to be really tight on this new brush just 6.5 brush normally I would wrap have JB bore cleaner on this patch that I was wrapping around the brush but because there's a good chance this one could end up, a 50-50 chance this one could end up going back to Winchester. Just so I could see what they had to say. I am not using JB on this one. Or any strong solvent. What I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this patch every time. And then when it comes out clean, we'll, we'll know the bore's clean. And that patch is pretty clean. Patch before this, I used ran it through about three different times and it was already starting to look pretty clean. So. Total, I guess he used six patches here maybe. So five patches and one of them I ran through several times. Now I'm gonna go through, and what I was looking for was, I was looking at the patch till it came out clean and it, there had been a lot of carbon on there, to, or excuse me, a lot of copper in there. The patches would have been coming out green. They weren't, so I know there's not much copper in there, which I only fired one shot. And I'm guessing all the carbon's gone. So now I just want to finish up with some dry patches. And I used to, and still often will, just depending on what's going on, I would take a, do the brush like that with the patch on it, then take a round patch. I was using a square patch on the brush, round patch here on a jack. And I would add some hoppies to this one but what I found out is just not necessary because the patch being on the wire brush, it's already cleaned everything. Every time I put hoppies on a, a clean round patch with the jag and ran it through, it would come out clean. So I'm just going straight to the dry patches. And that's important right there. Always make sure you finish up with dry patches, especially if you're going to do any shooting. We look to be almost seven inches left with that first shot, so, and five inches high, so. All right, the bore shot, the bore sight shot wasn't great, but it's on paper. Now we're gonna fire two shots, and this ought to, this should be interesting. This will give us an idea as to, start to give us an idea as to what to expect on accuracy. And the gun didn't blow up on the first shot, so that gives me a little bit more confidence in FN. Maybe it's going to shoot good.
Not terrible. So let's see what it looks like after two shots. We can see a little brass from us shooting in the shoulder here. Now we're in the throat. Yeah, there's that ugly land. But it isn't showing up as bad as it did before. I'm going to see marks from just about all of them with this carbon in here. That's where it actually starts. And let's check out this bore. All right, we've got our copper in here. Interesting little spots of copper there. Almost looks like splatter. And that would be, I'm guessing, I don't know, I'm guessing from those superheated gases we were talking about. Bit on the side of the lens. Different spots going on in there. That's that's interesting seeing that spotting like that. And some much larger spots. Here we're back at the third again, and, or excuse me, the, the crown. With those bursts still present from the, where they machined the crown. All right, let's get this cleaned up. I remember my friend Russell, he wanted to, go with me one time to watch me break in a new barrel. He wanted to see what all was involved. And he'd seen the results I'd had breaking in barrels. Those rifles were shooters. So he wanted to see the process. And I warned him it's going to be long and tedious and a lot of cleaning. And he said, okay. And he went with me. After about two or three hours into it, he was just miserable. <laughs> he didn't realize just how long and tedious it was going to be because there's a lot more cleaning with the JB bore cleaner because after you clean the bore with the JB, then you've got to clean the JB out of there. And it's just, it is a very slow process. That particular rifle though that he went to watch me break in. It was a shooter also. And this bore should be ready to go. And let's look at it with the bore scope again. Let's see just exactly what it looks like after I get through cleaning. I know I'm not getting all of the copper out of there, but I suspect it'll be noticeable difference. So the shoulder, the neck. Right, here we are back on those lands. Yeah, I guess they just are what they are. They still don't look nearly as bad as that 257 Roberts that was so uneven. Right, let's check out this bore. All right, we got a good bit of copper in there. Not horrible, but it's definitely there. And there's those ugly burrs at the end. 
So we definitely still have some copper in there in places. Other places we don't. Let's fire a three-shot group through here and see what we get. And that two-shot group was not horrible. I'd said before that the most accurate rifle I'd shot was stub millimeter miles or featherweight by FN. Well, that wasn't the most accurate rifle I shot, but it's definitely one of the most. At this point in the break-in process on that rifle, and I did break in that one with JB Bore Cleaner, those two shots were in the same hole when I was breaking it in, even with the cleaning. So I knew that rifle was going to be a shooter, but this one was not horrible. So pretty sure it's not going back to the factory at this point, and that's a relief anyway. So a little over an inch group, three shots. Yeah, definitely nothing I can send the rifle back over with that. And I'm shooting Winchester Power Points, 140 grain. I decided to go and go to factory ammo and, and start with the Winchester. If it was going to shoot horrible, I figured I'd let it do it with Winchester ammo. All right, so that's where we're at with... That's a relief for me. I mean, seriously, I, I was worried about three and a half inch groups out of this thing. And we still might get that with the cellar and bellet with the 130 grain stuff. With uneven lands, my understanding and what I've seen with the 257 Roberts, when you go to lighter bullets, the groups open up with uneven lands. The longer bullets being longer, part of the bullet's still in the case as it's contacting the lands and that helps stabilize it. I don't know how much there is to it, but that 257 Roberts, when I went to 100 grain bullets, it really opened up on the groups, over three inches. And I knew I was in trouble then with that one, but one inch, that's, that's, a, that's a start. Hey, we got something to work with here. We're seeing more traces of brass in that chamber now, and on that shoulder, the throat. I still don't know what to think about the throat there, the lands. It's not as ugly as it was, but it's still no thing of beauty. And after three shots, we're definitely seeing more carbon in the barrel now, and there's our copper. And I don't see that splattering from the copper we saw a moment ago, which how much of that's covered up by carbon, I can't say. Not a lot of copper on down though. We still got whatever all that is going on there, but okay, not bad. Okay, we definitely got a little copper in there and all that going on at the crown. Rifle's not shooting horrible. It's not what I'd hope. Better ammo, maybe it tightens up. Definitely not enough to send it back to the factory. Okay, so w with that said, I'm going to go ahead and use the JB Bore Cleaner on it. I own it now. I mean, it's, it's on me at this point, so I ain't got to worry about anybody saying, you know, you messed up a bore, or you shouldn't have done this, or you shouldn't have done that. All right, so let's get to cleaning. When I know I'm going to be cleaning at the range, I keep my cleaning supplies in this bag here, a little range bag and patches and everything else. Thankfully, I have my JB Bore Cleaner in here. So let's put this to use, and we'll see how what it looks like after after we clean it with it. And normally, I use Kroll Penetrating Oil with the JB. It's amazing what that that crawl will do as far as just letting it soak before cleaning it with JB Bore Cleaner. All right, I didn't bring it. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna let it soak with just a little bit of hoppies and then go back with the JB Bore Cleaner. And I think the, I think the crawl does especially good at breaking loose the carbon and then the JB seems to do really good with the copper.
So what I did is I coated this square patch with JB. I cut the patch down to size a little bit and put that on the inside where the brush is. Now I'm going to coat the outside with JB. And thankfully I keep some in my cleaning bag here for the range just out of habit. I didn't bring any paper towels with me, and I really wish I had. The stuff does make an absolute mess. And I also use the non-embedding formula. They, they've got different formulas. I don't know what the difference is. I just know I've always used the non-embedding. And I always heard to you to make sure that's the one I used. We're going to see if we can come backwards with this also. I know a lot of people say never come backwards with a brush. Usually when I have a um, patch wrapped around a wire brush, I don't come backwards just because it wants to pull the patch off. I want to come backwards on this because everybody's always worried about hurting the crown. We're not going to hurt this crown. And I want to see if that will polish some of that out of there that's all that the burrs on the end. Now I'll take the brush off and come back through. And normally I would go through here 10 times each cleaning with the JB, 10 strokes. But that was, would have been us shooting, you know, after each shot, we haven't done that so far. So, and the barrel's getting pretty dirty in there. Not bad at all, by any means. But I'm gonna do a little extra this time. I'm gonna go about 20 strokes on this since I don't have the crawl in there. We're, I've got, let the hoppy soak for just a few minutes, but we're just JB over top of the hoppies. And I'm not gonna put extra bore cleaner on every time just for that. After that first pass through there, I just want a little extra for that. And that's why I coat the patch on the inside before I put it on the brush also so that it's oozing out as I'm pressing it through. And I think of this kind of like dry, washing a car. There's no one way to wash a car. You make it up as you go depending on what the car looks like. If it's covered in mud, you're going to do something a little different than if it isn't, sometimes you wash the windows, sometimes you don't. I think that's the way cleaning a bore is, just and a break-in process. What's going on with the rifle? Now that that brush is getting broke in pretty good, I'm just going back and forth on passes. And now I'm just going to finish it off. Yeah, we're losing a lot of our JB out the end here. Now I'm just going to finish it off with some straight passes, just straight down. And you'll notice the JB's turning black as you use it, the, the brush. That black is actually steel from the bore. But any of you that have used a lapping compound or something like that, you know that's, that's what you end up with. And it is removing some steel with the polishing, but very, very, very little. It, if you've ever sharpened a knife, think of how much work it takes to to actually remove steel, and that's with something like a stone. All right, we'll call this done. And now I'm going to take a uh, jag and some patches and go through here with hoppies and get all this JB out of here. Well, that definitely took a lot longer. 
but it should be clean now. Let's get the borescope back out and see what it looks like after cleaning it with the JB. And it's still not going to be spotless, but it should be looking pretty good. And I'm really curious as to did that do anything for that ugly burr on the crown? All right, we're back in the chamber. Throat. Uh, definitely polished it up, so. There's those bad lands, but they are almost gone. So, yeah, that, there can't be much metal sticking up from that. And that that's really encouraging. And that bore is definitely nice and bright and shiny right now. We still got a little copper in the low places. That's okay. We want some in those low places. Let's see what that burr is looking like on the end. All right, look at that. There's still a little bit of burr there. But that is way better than it was. Okay, that was a significant improvement. As to what exactly that translates into as far as accuracy and shot groups, I can't tell you. But let's run some rounds through here and find out. All right, I have no idea where that last one went, so I'm going to go walk down there and take a look. Okay, that wasn't a drastic improvement, but it did appear to be tightening up a little bit. I'm going to do one more really good cleaning on this with the JB, and then fire one more group through here and just call it done at that. So let me get to cleaning, and then we'll see what that last group looks like. And we'll look at the bore after we fire a five-shot group. We know there's going to be some carbon and cop copper in here now. We know it's all going to go away when we get through cleaning. But after that five shot group, we'll see if it doesn't look a little better. Okay, that's enough cleaning for me for a while. So that was the JB and going back over it with the hoppies and getting all that out of there and then dry patches and everything else. And she's clean. Now let's fire a five shot group through here and and see if it tightens up anymore. Okay, I'd call that an improvement. And hey, maybe it would have done that if I hadn't have done all the cleaning and breaking in and everything else. I don't know. Uh, you, you were here, you saw how it started, you saw how it ended. And I don't know if those last two shots, we had three good shots there. I don't know the order of the shots. I'll know when I go back and watch the video. But matter of fact, let's go ahead and check this barrel, see if it's free floated because if that's the last two shots out to the right, and that tells me we got some stringing going on. Yeah, we are touching just a little bit. This barrel's supposed to be free floated, and it's not. Okay, with the groups we were seeing to start with, the patterns, those weren't groups, with those patterns, they were too imprecise for us to even 
for the barrel touching to even be something to even think about checking. But in that last group, it was we had enough going on there with at least three shots, and then two more out to the right. That, hey, now you know we're starting to see some other things. Okay, and I personally, I think that makes a world of difference doing that break in. Now let's take one last look at this bore now after five shots and see what it looks like. Okay, the theory is it's supposed to foul less after doing the break in. So let's see if the fouling looks not hot, too bad in here. There's the shoulder, the neck, the ugly throat. It ain't as ugly as we started. That's, that's about all I can say on that one. And that's worth something. All right, so now let's go down the board. We got... All right, we can see some copper. That's, and this was after five shots. And right now, the copper all appears to be just on the lands. All right, that little bit in the groove there. Same here. And that's just filling in the low places, and that's perfectly okay. Okay, that's not too bad. Let's look at that crown again. Alright, that's definitely better. So that's my process for breaking in a brand new bore. Now, whether or not it works or anything else, I can't say. That's just what I do. And again, on a new custom barrel or Something like that that's been hand lapped and everything else. I don't think it's that big of a deal. Maybe it still helps. I don't know. But on a just a standard factory rifle on the bore, yeah, I think it matters. I think it really helped us on this one, if nothing else, just getting rid of that ugly burr up there at the crown. And I think that's really what helped us on that five shot group. But again, that's just all speculation. That might have happened just with normal shooting and cleaning. I don't know. But I seem to have awful good luck every time I do that. And one thing I really wanted to point out here, with the JB bore cleaner, that's not something I'm gonna use for regular cleaning. Uh, and I'm not trying to make this bore look spotless in my normal cleaning. I want some copper in there. That's the only time I'll ever use JB bore cleaner on this rifle ever. I won't ever use it again. Now maybe if I'm still alive in 30 or 40 years and still shooting and I've ran a few thousand rounds through here or something, maybe. But that's it. Um, I seriously doubt I will ever use it on this rifle again. It's just not a, a normal standard cleaning product. But for breaking in a barrel, yeah, I'm all for it. Or an old rifle where it's already had umpteen thousand rounds through it and it's just slapped full of copper fouling and all this that and other. It can make a big difference on improving the accuracy. Okay, that went a lot better than I thought it might. The question is where to next on the project? Because I still had that same goal of putting five shots in a two and a half inch group at 500 yards. At least now that I actually have a little confidence that we can achieve that. I can even take the sticker off the barrel now. <laughs> okay, I guess the next step, load development. All right, and there's another part of break-in too. That's, I guess it'd be more just seasoning the barrel. This barrel's probably gonna pick up some velocity for the next 100 plus rounds. And I wish I'd brought my chronograph today just to see where, seen where we started at on velocity. And then after 100 rounds, checked it again to see if, if we did pick up any. But ne next time we go out, I'll bring the chronograph. And we'll see where we're at and then check it again on down the road. But All right, so we'll start on load development. Now that we got something to develop some loads for, y'all hey, don't, don't know what that did as far as lowering my blood pressure. I was hot for a little while there when I first saw those lands. But, and now we just got to get to know this rifle. 
Okay, every boar's different. Maybe this one doesn't even really start shooting good until after you get 20 rounds through it or so. Um, we won't, that's where the load testing comes in. And the load testing, our load's going to change over time as this boar gets seasoned and it picks up velocity, which is fine. It won't change by a lot. But just during that load testing process is when we really get to know this boar and start getting familiar with it. How many rounds does it take to get the fouling back in it after a cleaning before it really starts shooting? How many rounds does it take through it before the groups really start opening up before it needs cleaning again? Anyway, that's just all part, in, part of getting to know your rifle. But, hey, I, I'm happy with the day. So next time load development. God bless and have a great day.